Oh my God, it started. I don't know how it did that. That's weird. It's supposed to, um, it's supposed to, uh, start on the YouTube side before I hit my button, but I guess, wow, that's weird. Well, Hey, you just saw me getting started there. Ah, uh, how's it going, everybody? Uh, just a quick impromptu nerdrotic nooner, uh, to, to, for the middle of your day to give you a little break on the Rittenhouse stuff, even though I'm going to talk about it. That is so weird. Well, that's something I need to be aware of. Ah. Uh, Hale, how's it going? Well, I mean, is it a boomer moment when... Um, I don't know if I set it up differently. I'm trying to think if I set it up differently, but no, I didn't. When you Okay, so when you set up a live stream, you set it up, and then you put your stream key in, right? And then you put it through OBS, uh, and then there's a start stream button on my stream deck, which is supposed to start the feed to YouTube. But it's not supposed to start until I click a, a freaking red start button in the corner. Um, unless I set it up to, uh, but that's, you know, I scheduled this stream. So when you schedule a stream, it's supposed to be able to start when you want it to start, uh, but not the case. So either I um, put it through as a regular live stream, which I never do. And that's like the old school way to do it, where you just set it up on, uh, you have a, you have a scheduled stream and then you have a live stream, right? They're two different things. Uh, but I, I've scheduled this with uh, three other streams this week. So I hope they don't, I'm going to check everything now. Oh boy. Mm. All right, what I want to talk about today. Well, we're going to start out with a, with a little Hollywood being fucking Hollywood. And uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is, uh, I mean, it's everything's on political sides with that one. And I don't know, I was at the gym, so I don't know if they uh, came up with a verdict or not. I guess you guys can let me know in the chat. But the usual suspects are, you know, popping off. Um and one's a comedian, one's an aged actor from a TV show whose franchise is falling apart uh, and basically was made famous by Howard Stern in a soundbite after that. Um, and the other one is an ex-wrestler who uh, is in a movie I love, but every time he opens his fucking mouth, I love it a lot less. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the thing is when actors largely aren't very good at the real life thing. Go just look at all their relationships. Um, but because they pretend very well in film, they think everybody wants, they think everybody wants to know what they think about everything, uh, which we don't, uh, we appreciate your craft when you're good at it. I'm not too sure if Dave, Dave Batista is good at it in guardians of the galaxy. He is. He's very good at it. not in blade runner 2049, but nobody was good at in anything in that, not even Harrison Ford. Uh, and yeah, we'll get to that article in just a second. Uh, also, I'll give you my thoughts on the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer because I watched it. I'm going to put up a reaction on Nerdrotic Daily. Uh, what else do we got? We got, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Doctor Who and Star Wars being just lame. Um, and I see, you know, I, I watch a lot of channels and I see people kind of trying to work out in their head. I mean, the Kathleen Kennedy thing, it's not a surprise, okay? It's just not. If she was going to go, she would have gone a couple of years ago, but she's, you know, she's had a, a, a legitimate success to her name. How much did she have to do with it? I, I don't know. I wasn't in the building, but her name is on The Mandalorian. That saved her job. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. And the reason that saved her job is because a lot of people came back, uh, which, I mean, Prior to Gina Carano's firing, I thought maybe we're trying to mend fences and turn things around. But after they fired Gina Carano, that was it. That was all. Um, and that's the point where I think it's kind of like Doctor Who. It's a fixed point in time. The Last Jedi was a fixed point in time. Then it got a reprieve for some reason. But the Gina Carano firing, that's it. You're either on or you're off at that point. And if you're on which you have every right to be, 
just know you are contributing to more bad Star Wars. And you're contributing to killing the thing you love at that point. Just my opinion, but I'm sticking to it. Uh, timeless children. Timeless children. That's that's a deal breaker. It's all deal breakers. Gina Carano's a deal breaker. Last Jedi's a deal breaker. Uh, Alex Kurtzman getting re-upped. Deal breaker. I mean, that thing is so far gone with Star Trek. I'm uh, reviewing it just because it, it's fucking funny. It's it's unintentionally hilarious. Uh, I haven't laughed as hard as I... It's, I mean, usually I laugh pretty hard in Friday Night Tights, but outside of Friday Night Tights, uh, the the finale of Star Trek Discovery for season three was effing hilarious. I was pissing myself laughing, uh, especially when the special needs kid freaking <laughs> blew up all the dynamite because he missed his mommy. He went and blew up all the freaking all of Starfleet. <laughs> It cracks me up to this day. Oh, but man, that writer's... What, what's even funnier is I imagine the very saccharine and somber and serious writer's room in Star Trek Discovery. It's like we're, we're paving the way for the future. You know, Star Trek created so many scientists and members of NASA. And like, we're the new generation. We're going to have, we're gonna have ten, fives of tens of little girls that are going to watch our show and want to become psychiatrist because we cry so much no not scientist scientist that's right scientist um yeah the self-important and, and they write just shite uh first though i want to talk about uh why we're here i and i apologize uh, listen <clears throat> i apologize let's see the chat here here Let's see who's here for the chat. Let's see if this works. Hang on. Oh, I got to pop out the chat. That's why. Give me Mo. I was in the middle of doing that, and I realized I was streaming. There we go. That's good. Um, I apologize again to the fandom for a couple things, and you deserve this apology from a content creator. Okay. Uh, there's content creators out there. I'm not taking part in it, but I'll apologize on behalf of all of us. There is, uh, some of us out there who just really want you guys to mix it up and be fighting with each other all the time. There just is. Can't do anything about it. Not going to mention any names. Don't really care. I've got no time for these people at all, ever. They're in my rear view mirror. Don't care, but I will apologize for them. I will. So why are we here? <clears throat> Uh, I don't know if you watched the uh, hot mess, but fuck, it was good. Uh, that was the uh, the the Woodstock of Red Pill in a fucking motorhome yesterday. The Tim cast with Alex Jones and Joe Rogan and uh, Blair White um, and our boy Drew Hernandez, who uh, we're going to get on Friday Night Tights. <clears throat> and um, Drew's awesome. Drew's intense, man. He got into it. Uh, he got into it with Michael. Was it Ma Malice? I always forget his last name. The you know the the anarchist. I, I'm a little soft on the anarchy compared to him, but um, but I like him too. Uh, but uh, he called he called the Constitution a boomer rag or something like that. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Uh, but Joe Rogan said something that uh, I I've, I've been saying for a long time. I'm sure he said it before me. Okay. I'm just, I'm saying that I'm not saying I came up with it, but I loved what he said and it bears repeating. And I'm going to paraphrase it one more time. Why I am here. I'll say I, I'll, you speak for my channel. You guys are busy. You guys are running the world. You're busy at work every day. You're taking your kids to school. You're going to school. You're taking care of your mom. You're taking care of your dad. Uh, whatever you're doing, you guys run the world. You are the, uh, the, the great middle class out there, right? All, all tiers of middle class you're out there. Um, and I mean, that's a broad stroke by the way. Uh, but you know what I mean? You guys are hardworking people and you don't have time to sift through the minutia, the bullshit, uh, that goes on, especially with, um, modern media. So 
it, it just it it became my job somewhere along the line. Don't know really when, uh, and, and I'm pl- happy to do it. And, and it's and it's partially because I've been doing it for a long time, even before YouTube. I was doing it at the comic store too. It's just you know reading between the lines, uh, correcting the the uh, correcting what I think is a false narrative or breaking the narrative or at least proving that the narrative is written and it's largely written by liars. Informing, entertaining, having little fun. Uh, that's, that's what we try to do. And again, it's just my perspective on the world. I'm not saying it's gospel at all. Uh, but that's, that's why I'm here. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of unsolicited advice from other YouTubers out there on what I should be doing or what others or what Jeremy should be doing or as should be doing. And that's great. I'm, I'm always open to that stuff. Uh, but I, I know how you guys feel about unsolicited advice. I feel about the same way, you know, especially when it's all theater. So, um, you know, I have to, I have to repeat that. So, so Joe Rogan basically said, Hey, he was talking to Alex Jones, right? And he said, you know, and he put Alex Jones in perspective and he, he put it like this. He said, you're talking, he, he equated Alex Jones to a tennis expert who just assumes everyone knows who Roger Federer is. All right. And we're nerds. So, most of us know automatically who Alex Kurtzman is or Russell T. Davies. Most people don't. Most people don't know anything past Batman and Spider-Man. Say George Lucas is pretty well known. But that's about it. So we're in our nerd circles all the time and we get into our deep lore. But we got to remember that, that I got to remember to dial it back. Dial it back and remember, you know, hey, not everybody's into this stuff as much as I am. And I won't argue with you if you say it's a little bit too much. I, but I don't care, but you're right. Um, and that's what uh, that's what basically Joe said about Alex. He said, uh, you, you know, sometimes you just are over-informed and you assume everybody's watching, you know, every second of your show and people get a little lost because Alex digs deep. Whether you agree with them or not, the dude digs deep, okay? He digs deep. Uh, he he processes a ton of information. It's autistic in all the best ways, in all the best ways. Um, and we do that too. So when people are like questioning what is our purpose, which that's fine, you can do it. Uh, but it, it's... When, when it's constantly being brought up, when it's been responded to about a thousand times, then uh, it's up to, you know, it's totally up to the viewer to ask the question at that point. Like, what's the purpose of asking what our purpose is over and over again when we've answered the question a thousand times? Uh, and I'll keep answering it because we always have new people. We always have new people. Um, the, we, we don't have the numbers we, we need. Fa- uh, the Fandom Menace hashtag had a lot of support. That hashtag had a lot of support from a lot of people. I would say out of all the, uh, that was pretty big. I don't know if it was bigger than uh, than Gamergate. I can't say that because I wasn't around. But the numbers were fucking immense. Enough to where uh, a hashtag being used enough got caused a billion dollar corporation to blink and get mentioned. That's a pretty big deal. That That's a big deal. We're in their head. There's a few channels that are in their head, and you want to know why those few channels are there? Because they stuck to it. I was on the prize. Not just for six months, not for no, not just for eight months, for three years. I was on the prize. Not going after other channels, not going to play with this fucking drama bullshit. Lucasfilm, CBS, BBC, Big Tech, Washington. Eye on the prize, not each other. Doesn't mean we all gotta freaking hold hands and sing kumbaya, because uh, we're that ain't gonna happen. We're there. These are people. There. These are these are egos. These are people. Whatever. I'm still. I hey, again, I am willing to talk to anybody via DM. 
somebody wants to DM me, if they get a response, I'm willing to talk. Uh, if I think it's genuine, uh, there's some people who are way beyond that point, in my opinion, and just not worth it. It would just be an utter waste of time. I only have a limited time on this earth, but most, most, I will have a conversation with. Behind the scenes. Uh, other than that, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys have to go through it. All right. You can enjoy who you like. Pick whatever channel you like. Uh, and if they're moving forward or if they entertain you, that's great. That's cool. Good. There's a lot. I, I subscribe to over 225 channels now. And I try to peek in on all of them. And the vast majority of them uh, are uh, don't have as many subs as I do. Uh, doesn't make them any less good. There's some real, real, real good up and comers out there. There's criminally undersubbed in some cases, and it's very hard right now. It is very hard. It's it, it, you, you know you can get to that one to two to three thousand, but after that, man, you gotta got to work it. So uh, make it make it a hobby. Uh, this morning I was watching Matt at foul ball uh, cover the Expanse trailer, which was horrible. And I have to formally retract my recommendation to the expanse at this point and apologize again. Uh, now I kind of suspected because the books really got terrible towards the end, but the, sh I thought the show actually improved on the books in so many ways. Uh, but now it's just, um, straight up the, the show that was the best example of diversity and inclusion that never talked about it before bought into it towards the end and you know it just yeah it's it's disappointing i'm gonna watch the last season just to see it out but um uh you know my favorite characters are gone pretty much amos got a line in the trailer holden got a line in the trailer and the rest of it was uh all the ladies remember in the expanse last season when naomi was trying to catch your breath for four episodes, four fucking episodes. So and remember how they did Alex. Apparently they canceled the actor. I don't know. Maybe he sent a dick pic or maybe he just hit on a girl. I don't know. We don't know guys careers over and he was the best. He was the best ambassador for that show. Uh, he, if it wasn't for him, it would have never gotten picked up at Amazon. They just fucking shat on him. So I, I don't know how, again, I don't know. He could have done something horrible. So I don't know. We never, we never got the facts. Facts. Okay. Um, but again, I mean, the question is, it's going to get brought up again because it gets brought up and over and over and over again. Sounds like a broken record. I know that's a tire, as a phrase, as a boomer phrase. Uh, technically, I'm not a boomer. I'm a Gen Xer, but whatever. Call me what you like. Gives you a chuckle. That's all good. That's all good, baby. Let's see who's here. I know Eric K is here. He says Fufu Hale. Uh, BS is here. Let's bring this over here. Let's bring it. And I know I'm like I'm up against a fucking Ricada. Hail Nick Ricada for proving proving what the media is now. It is you and me. 106,000, 108,000 when I left. They're ghosting him on my phone, by the way. I don't know what that's happening to you, but he was being ghosted on my phone. He's not ghosted on my desktop. And uh, congrats. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Couldn't happen to a better guy. So, uh, yeah, we are the media now. Torch has been fucking passed. It's glorious. And I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens after this. Uh, we'll talk about Rittenhouse you know, I usually don't get in this stuff, but Hollywood spoke up, and that's my wheelhouse. So, okay, we'll go back to Polaris Sucks is here. Uh, Pegasus, is it Meteoric? Meteoric, I don't know, sorry. Grumpy Bear, a hacker called 4chan. Fred Bear, Ivan Ivanovich, Burns Loads, Beyond the Fan, Scott Kerr. Andy Mouse one two three Lisa Tobias Gregory two tone. Welcome, uh, DJ McFlurry, Weston four eighty seven Andrew Zobava, Sean Conlin hot coffee. Oh, I still have some hot coffee. 
uh, Michael Mann, what's up? Hey, I'm going to be on with Clifton Duncan after the show, right after the show. I'm going to be jumping on. Uh, this is a, a, it's a quickie nooner. Um, because I had to get one out today. And yesterday was like, uh, I, I, we're not going to be doing six hour real BBCs anymore. <laughs> it's just not, not, I can't do it. I cannot do it. Um, and we're not going to be doing that with Friday Night Tights anymore either. So I think we're going to be uh, hovering around four hours and maybe eventually trying to get it to three. Um, but, uh, yeah, it just um, wipes out the day. And I still haven't. Uh, God, I got to call Kaiser. So what else we have? Uh, BS, I already said that one. Herald of War, Fred Bear, Lord Thoth, Bolsky, Chemical 32, Cracker Jack, Matt Webb, Conine, and James Dugan. Welcome to the Nerdrotic Nooner. So, bounding into comics had an article. Greetings. Oh, what the hell? Why did that go? Bounding into comics had an article. Uh, Pat Oswald, Dave Batista, usual suspects popped off about Rittenhouse. And, um, you know, I haven't talked about it much. I think. I've seen the video, and my opinion is it's self-defense, uh, and the kid shouldn't be in court. Um, as far as the people who lost their lives, uh, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. We'll just leave it at that. I think Tucker Carlson had a better, better analogy than that. Uh, but of course, it's on political lines now, and there's there's a kid. I mean, whether you agree with what the kid did, uh, I mean, I I I wouldn't put my kid in that situation, but I understand why he was there because the cops weren't doing anything. And how disgusting was it to see cops testifying who sat on their hands and did nothing? We're on our own, folks. Remember that. We are on our own. Uh, the Twiki Kid says, Hail Nerdrotic in chat. Got a taste of freedom. Uh, vacationing in uh, Tennessee last week. Partied like it was 2019. All the best to you on your move to the south. Hail. Yeah, I'm actually going to be a little more south than I am now. That's weird. Hail. I can't wait. I think we. the plan is... Well, we're going to see our house soon. We get, I think we had to wait 20 days for some reason, even though we don't, you know, we're paying in a, we're, we're, we don't, we're not going through escrow. Let's just say that we're, we're paying for everything. Uh, but we still have to wait 20 days or something like that, but it's done. And I showed you guys a picture of what the new studio is going to look like. All right. So let's go to this written house thing. Please, we will try this. There we go. Knew I'd find it somewhere. All right. Again, usual suspects. And we're with, I mean, these are the same assholes who were pretty much rooting on the freaking rioting and the looting uh, last year. Uh, and Patton Oswald is like, he's the favorite now to voice like dumb animated characters. And like, I, I, I'm embarrassed to admit this. This is a comedian I liked quite a bit about 20 years ago, 18 years ago, when he would do like, you know, talk about his son being a jock. And when he got mad at him, he would throw his Blade Runner gun up on the roof and, you know, like picking on debt. Like that shit was funny. But then, um, you know, I also found out about the guy personally. He's like completely a total douche and forgets people all the time. Um, and uh, he, uh, 
yeah, I can't, there's so much I can't say about it. We'll just say like he's he relied on a lot of friends when he was coming up in San Francisco in the Bay Area. And well, he forgot all of them. He forgot every single one of them. So here we go. Uh, and, and again, it's it's this is dividing the country. I don't know how divided it is just on political lines, the way this thing is being uh, spun by the by the access media, the mainstream media. And oh, I'm sure you guys heard and this made uh, the Daily Mail. Uh, Rakata's stream, along with others, was uh, stopped by YouTube yesterday while PBS was fine. And according to YouTube, it was copyright violation, but they were showing the same thing PBS was. And uh, they got busted in 4K, as the kids say. Uh, and they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. And it's just looking like last year, isn't it? Uh, as the murder trial of Kyle Rittenhouse nears the end, while well, Hollywood elitists have taken social to social media to dish out their fairly controversial thoughts, and they are as disappointing and biased as one would have expected. Rittenhouse is facing multiple charges for uh, shooting three men. We know surprisingly absolutely no one left-leaning Hollywood celebrities have accused Rittenhouse of being cold-blooded white supremacist murder, making the outrageous unfunded claim, unfounded claim that he has benefited from his white male privilege. Now, um, I, I hear this uh, this argument being brought up a lot, and no, we, we don't hear about the the black kids and stuff like that. And and why not? And why not? Well, I mean, are we in charge of the broadcasting? No, we're not. So how are we gonna how are we gonna know about it? How are we gonna know about it? Sorry. Uh, we're not. We're not gonna know about it unless we're told. Unless we're told, and if we're not told, well. Then we don't fucking know. Now, this is something I, I, you know, I've been to prison, so I've seen how many black kids are in there, and I've seen it's a disproportionate amount, and it's a pro real fucking problem on this planet that we, uh, and in this country, that uh, I have no answer for right now. Uh, but, you know, it's up to the, it's up to the media, uh, who's, doesn't give a fuck, and this is what we've said all along, about justice or any of this shit. Uh, so they're willing to rake this kid through the coals, you know, and, and, and again, it's not something I would tell my kid to go do. But if, you know, he was damn near an adult, uh, his dad had a business in that town and maybe it was their life. And, uh, you know, uh, if somebody was going to burn down my comic store, I'd go and, you know, if I owned it, I'd go and protect it too. I would. Uh, and again, I don't even think she should be on trial, but of course, Hollywood's going to weigh in. Uh, they probably still think he shot a couple of black guys, as far as I know. You know that that was surprising to a lot of people, by the way, that the the guys he shot were white. Uh, if you want to see how justice often learns, uh, hard, leans hard towards privilege, watch the judge in the Rittenhouse case, uh, asserted Star Trek actor and raging left wing activist. That's all he is now. He's not an actor. Uh, George Takai adding a deplorable example indeed. Um. This is the side of empathy, by the way. This is the side of empathy. Uh, oh, it's Rose. Uh, Colin is a hero. I don't even know what these two have to do with each other. Other than the media is responsible for blowing uh, both up. Oh, my God. Colin Kaepernick. I watched his rise and fall in San Francisco. He was just a bad quarter. He had a good, he had some skills uh, that every defensive coordinator in the NFL figured out in a year, and then he was done. That's Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, Jeffrey Wright. Oh, my God. 
fucking John and your ads, dude. Come on, founding. You're starting to get a little bit like bleeding cool. Stop it. Jeffrey Wright. Oh, Jeffrey Wright. Good actor. Insane human. At the very least, it should be pretty clear now why it's against the law in Wisconsin for a 17-year-old to be running around in public with an AR-15, right? Well, that depends. Uh, That depends on the law, uh, Commissioner Gordon. Uh, Rittenhouse was there to provide medical support except to the people he killed or maimed. Uh, He left them to die. Uh, Make it make sense. Uh, He was attacked. He was being attacked. Uh, Did you forget that part where they were running down and threatening to kill him? Should he just die? I'm sure that's what you expect. As a parent, my God, can we just end as a? Can we end as a forever? As a parent, I'll tell you when they cry hysterically, it's not because they're feeling guilty. It's because they got caught. Well, fuck. I'm glad you're not my parent or weren't my parent. Um. Uh, Rosanna Arquette, who threatened to never film in Texas again because of some abortion law, but we all know it's because she couldn't get drugs anymore. No, that's just a joke. We all know that Kyle Rittenhouse were black and young man had shot and killed the protesters with an AR-15. He wouldn't have this insane privilege and the mother would be in jail. What does this got to do with his trial? Okay, if if Kyle Rittenhouse was a Martian, could we even try him? Kyle Rittenhouse was a rock. He wouldn't have had a gun and he wouldn't be on trial. See, okay, Rosanna Arquette doesn't get much attention anymore as an actress. Her 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 days are long gone and her days when they were here weren't that here. She kind of made it for a little while and she's at that unfortunate age where she's not got, getting a lot of roles and you know whether she got too much work done or whatever, whatever's going on there, she needs more and more attention. So, she just blasts this shit out. Does she really feel anything about it or think about it. Maybe she's got it rationalized in her head, but it's more about getting attention on her and she doesn't care about like what she's saying factually or not. And and like, listen, I I don't follow celebs for precisely this reason. And then they say no justice, no peace from her fucking, well, she's not in a million dollar mansion from her, you know, decent suburban home, right? Where she's not, uh, living near any hoods or anything and not has to doesn't really have to worry about her shit burning down. She can say no justice, no peace. Shut the fuck up. I, I would say shut up and act, but you don't even do that anymore. So just shut up. Garden variety, shut up. Uh, murder victims are on trial, not murder. Uh, murder victims are on trial, not the murderer in America. Well, it depends on what the um, victims did. Uh, are you okay with what they did, Rosanna? I, I doubt she even fucking knows. She probably still thinks they're black, like I said. Pat Oswald. Oh, goes to Charlie Manson, who loved doom buggies and idolized the Beatles, arrived in Los Angeles with dreams of recording success. A thwarted record deal and an address mixed up led to him expressing his grievances in a way that many have issues with. Uh, no, it was also, he had a kind of a cult out in the desert and he was dropping lots and lots of fucking L and mescaline and shit. And that fucked with your head. And he thought the Beatles were fucking talking to him and, and he, and he was probably insane before that. Uh, but you're funny, Pat. Well, no, you're not funny, Patton. And you married awfully quick. After your wife died. Seriously, fuck that kid. Fuck his breakdown. Uh, fuck the judge. He's a murderer who set out to murder people. He's got out on bail and celebrate, celebrated his murders with fucking racists. I have zero sympathy for him and neither should anyone else. Um, vaxxed as fuck, Dave Batista. Well, uh, we'll see uh, how your career goes after. Uh, I mean, the roids can only go so far, although they, you can probably do the roids. And you're pretty old. Um, this 
So box office receipts are down. Ratings are down. Everything's down. Um, they've been hiding this for quite some time because, well, they, they've been spinning it on a lot of things, why things are down across the board. There is oversaturation. There is COVID. There's a lot of reasons. But there's also this. People see this every day, and it, it does affect your bottom line. And they don't care. They don't give a shit. And and largely, the people who are in charge of them don't give a shit either. But thankfully, you do. And this, you know, um, I, either they didn't see the video. Uh, but here, here's. I don't know. Here's just something I learned early on. I, I don't know where I learned it. It's probably through osmosis. Uh, but if a guy has a gun and I have a skateboard, I'm not going to hit the guy with the gun if I just have a skateboard. Uh, for one, I, I don't know if the guy with the skateboard had a gun or not. I know another guy did. But um, I know self-defense is self-defense. And I know... Unlike, well, do you think Batista would know this? Batista's like supposedly from the hood. He would know this. Um, Patton Oswalt doesn't know this <clears throat> and would never know this. Uh, anytime you get in a scrape with a fight with a guy or a gal, whatever, anytime you get in a fight, you could die. Ah, fuck it. it but woke Hollywood. Is gonna woke Hollywood. Woke Hollywood is gonna woke Hollywood. And instead of going out there and just uh listen, it, it, people can have opposing opinions. And again, I haven't watched uh, a lot of the trial, so I'm it's not about that. It's it's what we can do to stop all this divisiveness, right? And that uh, because uh, this has been going on for four years. And uh, I saw it happening a long time ago. And, you know, a lot of us were just like, hey, uh, why, why don't we just have some enjoyment? But these, look at, you know, that that face in the middle of Pat right there. That's, kind of, you know, he's making a funny face, but that's how they feel about us, about the world. And, and you see how fucking miserable they are. These are rich folks. These are like Pat doesn't have to work another day in his life. And neither does George Takei, whose career is, you know, basically a gag at this point. But no, very rich, very comfortable people in nice fucking houses are telling you how shitty everything is. And they really wonder why most people just can't stand them on a personal level. That bugs them. It certainly does bug them. There we go. Uh, greetings and salutation, neurotic. Thanks for the entertainment. Long live the fellowship. God bless America. God bless America. Hell yeah. Uh, I agree with that. And long live the fellowship. Uh, a loose fellowship of uh, of folks who practice the uh, the common sense. I like that quite a bit. Uh, the Grizzly for $10. Also, here boosting Battletech. Great game and tons of potential for great TV series. Think Gundam meets Star Wars meets Game of Thrones. Fun video games and awesome model kits for all. For all. Sounds cool, Grizzly. Sounds brilliant. Um, Gary, Star Trek, rest in peace. Saw a recut Rocky Ford director's cut over new uh, Eternals. 30-year-old movie is better than what we have today. Watching old BSG and DS9. I've been, uh, I kind of checked in on some, uh, I watched the miniseries over the weekend, the Battlestar Galactica miniseries. I love it. Michael D. 
Uh, false. Thank you for the five dollars. Uh, I haven't watched the Rocky Four Directors Cut yet because I don't know where to find it. I, I I only gave it a mild look. I thought it would be on Amazon Prime, but once I find it, I'll watch it. Watch a Ghostbusters tomorrow. Going to watch Ghostbusters tomorrow. Uh, thank you for serving as an inspiration for new content creators such as myself. I gave an in-depth review as to why I genuinely think Eternals is the worst MCU movie. We need more backlash on that trash. It's getting an insane amount of support, but I think it's because they know it's just utter trash and it only exists for identity, right? And that's bothering. It really, when something only exists for identity and then it utterly fails, yeah, it's going to worry people who only exist for identity because Hollywood is still a bottom line town and they are still going to fucking, uh, I told you, if Spider-Man No Way Home is just a fu- it's just a fan service movie, I'm not expecting Shakespeare. And quite frankly, I think that the only reason I want to see that movie is the Sam Raimi villains and the Sam Raimi characters. Not even the Amazing Spider-Man characters. I'm not really in there for that. But that's it's it's nostalgia bait. It's jangling keys. That's all it is. Uh, but if it's just a fun movie and it makes a billion dollars, that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, and it's a Sony movie. You know, Disney does get a piece, but Sony gets most of it. Sony gets most of it. What Disney put out this year is is shit. It's just utter shit. Uh, Danny Elfman's Spider-Man theme is the most underrated uh, film score of all time. If they don't play it during Toby's reveal in No Way Home, I will be ticked, says Unpopular Movie Reviews for $5. Uh, yeah, and they're in it, by the way. Uh, we got confirmation that they're in it. There is a uh, clip going around there, and I put it on my Twitter, where you see Lizard getting punched by an invisible person. That's that's Spider-Man. So they're in it. I'm, I imagine they're just at the end. It's looking like they're just at the end. Um, and it looks, you know, it looks fine. It looks fine. It, it's, uh, it doesn't look like the greatest thing ever made. And it could lead to... It could be kind of like J.J.'s first Star Trek. It could lead to a lot of cringe and a lot of really bad storytelling. But this film by itself, I don't. I, I agree with Mahler, though. Like, why stop at Spider-Man? Fucking give me Nicolas Cage, Ghost Rider, and Ben Affleck, Daredevil. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Uh, elites need Rittenhouse uh, have to Creole in order to avoid censorship. Uh, Ritten pounce uh, to be guilty. So anyone who even thinks about defending their homes, business being peaceful, protested into smoking crater to be found guilty of racism. Keep up, uh, keep the average population, uh, grizzly, by the way, thank you for the $100. I appreciate it. And you are right. What did I say in my last live stream in San Francisco? You call the cops. They ain't coming. They aren't coming except for one thing. You want the cops to show up for sure. Defend yourself, defend your property. Then they'll come and arrest you. That's going to my San Francisco video. I'm going to talk, tell the little story about how I almost got arrested defending my own store. And it was a sympathetic cop that got me out of it. Uh, hey, Gary, here's a belated uh, fiver for Spider-Man's junk segment on the last nooner. I proper LOL. Ah, Chris Kelly, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the five uh, British pounds. I wasn't too sure if I went on too long, and uh, I know I was supposed to balance it out with Selma Hayek's uh, boobs, which we might be able to do later. We might be able to do that later. Uh, and here in the steadfast uh, for, it's been a while since we did this. Hang on. We can do this. There we go. Her in the steadfast for 20 Canadian. Oh, that was, uh, okay. There we go. That was from yesterday. I guess I could read it now. I was a fan of Chuck Norris, Texas Ranger, Texas Rangers show. I lost interest in the new uh, one when the star said the newer show wasn't about roundhouse kicking minorities in the face as if the old one was about that yeah fuck that i fucking stars coming in without watching the old show and thinking their show is just so modern and thinking just like white people just beat up black people all the time 
Uh, it's so fucking dumb. But actors are fucking dumb. Most of them are dumb. Uh, Clifton Duncan is not who I'm going to be talking to in about 45 minutes. Um, he's not dumb. He isn't. But he'll attest that a lot of them are. By the way, Kathleen Kennedy. <clears throat> uh, she is uh, she is resigned. Okay. She's resigned. Um, another thing, and, and this will come as no surprise to you. Uh, the reason so many people leave Lucasfilm when they when they, you know, this got brought up before. Like people are so excited to work on a Star Wars film, but then they work for Lucasfilm and they realize it's micromanagement hell, right? So John Favreau is the kind of person who can work with it. He's a pretty easygoing guy. He can deal with micromanagement hell. Most can't. And Lucasfilm is micromanagement hell. Like, I can't think of a worse place to work. I worked at a micromanagement place in Hollywood for a month. I just couldn't take it. Um, like... I would go to my car for lunch. Go to my car for lunch. And they're like, could you have lunch in the lunch area just in case you're late? Uh, you know, I'm like, what? What if I want to drive out for lunch? Well, we, we ask people to, to, to stay here. I'm like, oh, you can ask me, but I'm going to go in my car. Fucking weird. Uh, chin ball sucks for 270. Hey, Gary, uh, on the donation side, me and my mom adore Doctor Who. My mom's also been watching since the second Doctor and is bitterly disappointed how woke and terrible the writing has become. We went back and watched the classic series to reignite our love for it. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you're still watching the old stuff. I do too. I still can do it with Doctor Who. And for the most part, Star Trek. I next generation's a little tough. Um, Star Wars is ruined for me forever. And I don't care. I don't it it's like I had a good time, it's fine. But Disney like pissed and shat on the corpse and then set it on fire and then pissed on it again. Uh Retro Meister for five dollars. Hail Gary, I sent you an email recently for a really cool t-shirt idea that I believe makes an impact on the YouTube situation. I am a small creator, so it's really difficult trying to get uh, the word out. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Well, I'll check it out. Like, get the word out on a t-shirt? Man, I don't get the word out on my t-shirts. <laughs> but I'll check it out. Uh... I will check it out. As far as getting the word out on stuff, like I, I'm happy to do it when I can, you know, when I can. Uh, but um, I can't promise all the time. I, I wish I could, but I can't. Uh, Hardwick Benthal for $1. I'm surprised Patton Oswald hasn't distanced distance himself from king of queens considering how anti-woke it was it was made fun of uh solicits and lefties on a frequent basis it even had an episode where russians talk about how horrible communism was um yeah dude that is uh for one it wasn't pat oswalt's show it was uh, i'm forgetting it's the other comedian show so pat oswalt is like all the other empty fucking headed douchebags they'll say whatever they need to say they'll do whatever they need to do to get ahead and get attention and Patton Oswalt showed that to all his like supposed friends who helped him out on the way up that he completely forgot and I mean it wasn't just like there's a lot of cases where friends feel entitled to somebody's fame because they get there no no this was like fucking paid his rent like he lived in a house rent free fed his ass you know, like really fucking helped him, like truly helped him. And, you know, a hello. That's all they wanted was a hello. They didn't want money. 
Uh, just look at Oswald, Gary. You can see uh, he gladly cradles the balls and gargles that ESG gravy. Uh, yep. I love that the ESG stuff's going around. By the way, ESG started with Joe Rogan. Uh, and we talked about it. I covered that podcast. That was like a year ago. Uh, I'm glad it's c catching on. ESG is connected with um, CRT and all the other shit that's going on in Hollywood. All the other shit. But, yeah. I, do they get money for it, though? I don't know. I'd have to see a smoking gun for that one, but I I, I, I bet. Um, There's an article that was out in... I believe it was the Hollywood Reporter in 2016 that I remember reading. And it's called The Blurred Lines Between Washington and Hollywood. And it was all the Obama administration. And considering that's probably what we're in right now, <laughs> the third one. Uh, if if our, uh, what's our, what's our gross national product? If it goes back to like growing a half a percent, then we'll know we're in the third Obama administration which i think we are uh why does uh why doesn't anyone mention how high on drugs kyle's attackers were well they were on psychiatric well one guy was off his medication unless they went and got like street drugs well they had to be uh they had to be there was like a lot of loaded people were running around and burning down our fucking country. And we can thank, you know who we can fucking thank for that? The, the fucking company that's being praised, that's getting his fucking dick sucked by this fucking Colbert's of the world. Pfizer. Pfizer's put a lot of people on the fucking street. And, and yeah, there's personal responsibility. There is. Absolutely is. And then there's making a fucking drug that is just insanely addictive. Insanely addictive. And we have more young people now on the street than ever. And, yeah. Fucking Heron made a big comeback. Coke made a big comeback. And now that uh, the border is wide open, there's going to be all kinds of fucking drugs running around. Yeah, everybody was high and burning down our, our, our fucking country. And uh, people sat on their fucking hands, man. That can't happen again. I don't give a shit what the verdict. If people start the R word over this verdict, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I guess it could happen. Uh, not Ginger Ginger for five dollars. I just want to brag that Nerdrotic now follows me on Instagram. Uh, thanks, Mrs. N. Oh, you're welcome. I, I would have followed you, Ginger. Are you on Twitter too? I'll follow you there. Uh, toxic Fandom. For $100, says Gary, thanks for everything you do. I don't normally get to catch your live streams being in Hawaii. They're normally in the middle of my workday. Hope you're having a good day. Toxic Fandom, thank you for the $100. I appreciate it. I'm having a great day. <laughs> having a great day, man. Put out a video. Got to do a little bit of a live stream. Going to talk to Clifton. Um, and I'm working on uh, a lot of fun stuff for the channel. Uh, the, the main focus, uh, you know. I've been putting a lot of work into Friday Night Tights. Uh, and I'm going to be putting a lot of work into that and my channel now. So, uh, and we're going to see where things go. We're going to see where things go. Uh, Agent Zero for $5 says, Peeping Tom versus the he, she, sort of like the uh, man thing before SJW. I like that. Peeping Tom uh, Phoenix Tangent for $10. Can we bring back 90-minute movies? Less time spent in theaters to a uh, lower production cost where runtime uh, per theater. The downside is that the script writers and planning have to be on point in the beginning. Yeah. I just don't know. 
I think the future is long form. I, I've said that for years, and I and I still believe that. Um, and that's the entertainment I prefer. I, lo- I love a good movie. I love a good movie. But if you ask me, like, what do you like better, a good series or a good movie? I like a good series. I do. Um, there's cinematic achievements out there, but I, you know, I would, I much rather watch a couple episodes of Buffy or Twilight Zone or BSG, new or old, or Blake Seven, or Farscape, or Venture Brothers. Fucking Venture Brothers. Oh, my God, at least we're going to get one more. Go Team Venture. One of the greatest shows ever produced. Thank you, Toxic Fandom. Uh, Scott Vakra for five British pounds bought Galaxy 4. Doctor Who is still alive where it matters. It is. It is. I know a lot of people are trying to break down the rumors of uh, what's going on. Uh, They're just going to double down. Belle was a Mary Sue. Like, she came in smiling and just, like, running through freaking Cybermen and Daleks like she was just a knife through butter. Uh, Meet the middle and bring back film serials. Insanity Methods for two pounds. I love film serials. I think that would be, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. If 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 Disney were smart, if I owned Marvel and had Disney money, uh, yes, there would be Marvel superhero serials before every movie, and it would be like a period piece. It would be Captain America's Adventures in 1940, or fuck, you know, Conan or something. I mean, like something fun, something fun. It would all be fun. I do half hour episodes on Disney Plus. That would be like legit origin stories that would lead into movies that aren't filled full of wokeness and fucking bullshit and out of shape characters. It would be heroes being heroic. Hollywood and the cult are so wrapped up into race swapping, they've race swapped the criminals Kyle sent in their maker. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Things will get so far gone, they'll be back again. Uh, I watched a video about Elden Ring's lore and love it. You should check it out. It's good. Uh, Mika P for five dollars. You mean that thing George R. R. Martin worked on instead of Wins a Winner? Ooh, I'll check it out. Uh, and thanks again, Toxic Fandom. I appreciate you, uh, James four eight five. I meant to say KK resigned. Well. Disney don't get another dime from me. Uh, no. No, they, they they shouldn't. I mean, you know, again, I see channels out there. The other channels I like, I, I, they can do what they want. But, like, this is why you don't center your channel around one thing. <laughs> just don't. Just don't. Uh, especially when that thing is just going down. Listen, Star Wars will always be around. Disney Star Wars will always be around. It's just going to get... It's going to get uh, more woke. It will get more homogenized. And everything it's produced good was an older thing that existed before Disney got involved, like Clone Wars and the Mandalorian, which is like the simplest formula in the world that they still cocked up. By the way, the Mandalorian's fucked up. One of the most popular characters got fired and they, they gave it a year break. The hottest show probably on the planet. Idiocy. Total idiocy. And that's and that's because of incompetence. Because Kathleen Kennedy micromanages and drives people fucking crazy. So they go through a lot of people. And it doubles all their costs and everything. Uh, Rough Girl for $10 says you predicted all this Hollywood dribble years ago. You were right then. You are right now. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Why doesn't anyone mention how... Oh, I read that one. But uh, I'll mention it again. The people who attack Kyle were really high on drugs. As another bearded wise man said of Sauron, for he is never wise and weighs all things to a nicety of... uh, in the scales of his malice. But... The only measure 
that he knows is desire, desire for power. And so he judges all hearts. That's right. The whole fact that they wanted to destroy the ring wouldn't even cross Sauron's mind. That's why they were able to get away with what they were able to get away with. Because he's like, everybody wants my ring for power. So I know it'll be around. It's just a matter of me finding it. What, what, they want to destroy it? What? <laughs> if we get Daredevil, then I want Frank Castle, but I'm a Punisher fanboy. Uh, Joe, for $10, I, I am too. But can I mean, like, Disney's the Punisher? Disney's the Punisher. Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest roadblock for Disney and its streaming service and, and investors are going to figure this out. By the way, investors are clueless. They don't know what's fucking going on. And, uh, you know, like we're not consumers here. We're customers. We're paying customers. We're not consumers. The consumers can go to other channels. We're the paying customer. Um, not being able to make rated R content or hard PG 13 content with superheroes is a big weakness, is a big effing weakness. You, you, know what's, you know what's hilarious is the, I mean, arguably, no, the biggest superhero hit of the year until Spider-Man comes out is a, Snyder, is a Snyder Cut. And Mikey Gussler asked me months ago, would the Snyder Cut make $100 million in a weekend? If it was released exclusively in movie theaters without being on HBO Max at the same time, uh, I think it would have it would have beat Shang Chi, it would have beat Eternals, and it would have beat Black Widow. I don't know about a hundred million, but it beat all three of those movies. Yes, it would because you Snyder nuts would go see it like five times, and it did peak enough pr curiosity, and it was like the best selling Blu Ray. Um, Raymond Chamas for $10 says Hollywood has already lost. Perhaps they have decided to come to terms with it. Now nah, they're trying to serve. I mean, there are a lot of people who truly understand Hollywood who are seeing this, right? There's, there's Chris Gore out there. Chris Gore is a man on an Island, right? He's a guy who just loves film and just wants it to exist, but he also recognizes reality. So he's not caught up in the game. You know, Robert Meyer Burnett's kind of the same way too. Um, but not as much as Chris Gore, but both of them recognize the reality. Uh, they're in tune enough with the fans to at least acknowledge that there's a problem here. Like so many in Hollywood just don't even acknowledge that there's a problem in the fandom. They just think it's a fucking few racists. And they don't understand, like, this is a pretty big number. Again, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say we're the majority, but I'm going to say we're a big enough number to have an impact on things. And the number is growing every single day as people like yours truly and others wake people up. And it's not like you were asleep. I don't want to make it sound like that. It's like, hey, you were busy. And that's understandable. If I was out there working every day, I'd be the same way. I'd be worried about my job and my bills. I ain't got time to worry about like, how Watchmen is dividing the country. Spilled my coffee a little bit. A little bit of a spilled coffee. Not bad, though. All right. Uh, Michael D. Uh, Fal I'm just going to say false. I'm going to say false. Uh Gary, Star Trek, rest in peace. Oh, I read that one already. Okay, so we got to go up here. Um, Another article I wanted to check out. Hang on. We got the pendulum will swing again. Our strong times will produce such weak men. Then we will shake the nightmare and discuss the great, the crave genuine true heroes, the discuss and crave genuine true heroes and myths again. Hail, solo nerd Roddick Nooner. Hail. Well, they're all going to be solo. There might be a guest here and there. Um, I am going to have some help too, so I can actually just broad, so I can actually just host. Um, uh, Disney's the Punisher. Disney's the Panderer. More like says Jay Hag for five pounds. Yeah, th th I think Disney will bury the Punisher, or they'll make him like dumb. 
Shang-Chi and Marvel stands are upset that I recently pointed out that Godzilla vs. Kong made more money with uh, a sti- uh, with, with it simultaneously on HBO Max release and more uh, stringent COVID restrictions. Hashtag G versus K was a triumph. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And my video today was just to point out facts. The movies lost money. So you can't have a success that lost money. You could have a, hey, we cut our losses. It did better than we thought it was going to be, but it lost the company money. So save all your stuff, Disney. Yeah, I mean, it, it it wasn't the only movie. Jungle Cruise, Free Guy, Black Widow, and Shang-Chi lost money. They are not in the business to lose money. Disney can take the hit, but that's exactly why Paramount delayed both Tom Cruise films because they couldn't take the hit. But here's the deal. I don't know if the box office is going to be much better in a year. Do we know this? Uh, because I've been trying to say over and over again, I, I had some twat waffle on Twitter say, I don't acknowledge the coof. I Yes. Okay. I acknowledge the coof. It's a factor. It's not the only factor. It's a factor among many. And if Hollywood thinks the coof is going to, su- no, it's not. Because there is a percentage of people who are never going to leave their fucking house again. They're going to wear masks all the time. They are traumatized for the rest of their lives. You see them out there. You do. They're the ones with the, they have the mask on and then the plastic guard and then fucking gloves. And then when you get near them, they jump out like, you, you know, like you're made of fucking uh, poison. You know, Pfizer, all its entities and subsidiaries is its executives, boards and directors, past and present and future. All assets past and present and future are hereby confiscated for a, the benefit of my people, says Raymond Chamas for two dollars. Um, well. We don't want to hear the the government say that. We don't. But I don't like Pfizer either. Hey, what the hell's going? Why is the chat box open? Sorry about that. Yeah, I had everything set up today, and I don't know why it fucking that. Yeah, that's kind of bothersome. That's a little bothersome. I saw something weird happen because I set up two streams, and you, I'm going to bore you with that. And they both had the same key, and I'm like, that's impossible. So I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. Uh, But look what happened. I tried to set things up ahead. I did. I did. Uh, Let's go. Uh, If conservatives rioted or peacefully protested in their event, Kyle was found guilty the military would be sent in to gun them down since it would be considered an act of war, says Roll Titan. Uh, they would be called terrorists. Yeah, they would. They would. I, I don't doubt that at all. That would be the media running with that. Uh, they're being called it anyway. Um, I don't want there to be rioting at all, period, at all. Uh, destruction of property isn't going to solve anything. Uh, what's this? Dave Cullen beat you out on the Picard season one review. Roger Zimmerman. Oh, I didn't know we were in a competition. I didn't know we were in a competition. I compete against myself, but I'm glad he got it out. There's a lot of people. Um, I think Red Letter Media uh, beat me a year ago. Uh, you and, uh, but we're going to try to Roger. We're going to try to get Dave Cullen on Friday night tights. You and your buds make my days so much better. Wish my buds would quit drinking cool aid and stop virtue signaling. Would love to hang out case Fritz. I'm sorry. Uh, that's what Joe Rogan said. He said the vast majority of people still watch the mainstream, uh, news and they fucking eat it up. So they hear somebody like Alex Jones or they hear something like Joe Rogan or they hear somebody like Tim Poole uh, or Drew Hernandez or on the entertainment side, me. Uh, and uh, yeah, they, they get a little freaked out. They get a little freaked out. They're like, oh, my comfort zone is disrupted, is disrupted. And the fact of the matter is we are up against people who don't want freedom. They want to be coddled. They want to be taken care of. 
and they're willing to burn our freedom to do it. So that is a problem. We need to win hearts and minds. That's what we need to try to do first. And uh, you need to convince your buds. People like to be lied to, though. Daniel, thank you again. Uh, You know, I'm I'm working on three quarters of a computer here. So it just kind of, it does not run smoothly like it used to, which sucks. But it will again soon. Uh, 3D Honda has been a member for 13 months, says, congrats on the new house, Gary. Hope this is the start of many awesome things. Buddy, keep up the awesome work. Hashtag release the Picard review. I will. I will. I will eventually. Uh, Hail, by the way. Hail. All right, I got to wrap things up because I'm going on Clifton Duncan. This was always meant to be a short one. And oh, hi, Lady Grave Master for five dollars. It says saving my five hundred dollar donation. Five is no uh, for the day. You're wrong. So I think I can uh, safely say the money isn't going anywhere. Pretty sure Disney is violating monopoly laws, among other things. So if the folks who were supposed to handle that could do their job, that'd be great. But they're in their pocket, Lady Grave Master, and you know that. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know that. Thank you for the five dollars, Lady Grave Master. All right, uh, if I missed anything, it'll be in the square up. Sorry, this one was short. Uh, and yeah, and God, I'm glad it even went through. Um, so I'll be on Clifton Duncan in about 10 minutes. I don't know if we're recording it live or if it's a podcast recording, though, but I'm meeting him in 10 minutes and I'll let you know when it's up. Pay attention to my Twitter. This will be on Nerd Roddick Live in a couple of hours. If you missed any of it, uh, again, all the super chats and donations that were not read will be read on the next square up, which will be out. Friday morning, uh, as far as my content is concerned, um, Star Trek Discovery Season 4 review live tomorrow morning sometime. Not sure. Keep an eye on my Twitter and the community section. Friday Night Tights with Razor Fist, 1.30 p.m. Pacific Time this Friday. We'll be talking about Ghostbusters. We'll be talking about Kyle Rittenhouse and everything and how Hollywood has dealt with it and amongst many other things with the great fucking Rageaholic. Razor fist. I'm looking forward to this one with the laddies, with the laddie laddies. Uh, in the meantime, uh, not all who wander are lost. And uh, oh boy, how do I want to end this one? I guess may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. Toby, Toby, and the light source is hitting the right side of his face. And I can't believe I'm about to say this. I never thought I would say this in my entire online career. But look closely at Toby Maguire's dick. Look closely at Toby Maguire's dick. Nerdorotic.com. <laughs>
Stop eating my sesame cake. Stop eating my sesame cake. Pizza time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Head on. Apply directly to the forehead. Head on. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come.